big lips have become a status symbol much like the latest designer handbag. But is the pressure to look like a Love Island contestant meaning safety suffers? Lip fillers have become hugely trivialised and hugely popularised. Being an addict to filler, anyone can perform filler treatments. It was clear that I've had them done and something had gone wrong. Liverpool is arguably the lip filler capital of the UK. There were more online searches here last year than anywhere else in the country. But how do you know if the person carrying them out is properly qualified? You don't need to be a doctor or a nurse to do these types of non-surgical procedures. And of more than 900 complaints made to a national register known as Safe Face, 83% were carried out by non-medics and a quarter came from people living here in the northwest. Today, Lauren's getting her lips done by the lip king, Jordan Park. He isn't medically trained and admits being a lip filler addict. I went online, bought some filler from China and I did it myself. Um, and obviously kept adding, they were bigger, bigger, bigger. And that's obviously when they were at their biggest. At the top, we've got my advanced dermal filler course. But Jordan believes beauticians like him have been adequately trained and that a ban would create a black market. When people talk about beauty therapists, they say they're thick, they're, they're, people talk about beauty therapists like that. And I just think, how dare you? Like, if you saw the anatomy and physiology, the exams that I've done, do the public really think that if it got banned, these beauty therapists would stop? They wouldn't. They'd go online, they'd buy it on the black market and then put it in people. I feel like if I went to a doctor, they'd have a lot, a lot of boundaries and I wouldn't. I won't want that. <laughs> back. Lauren couldn't be happier with her lips, but not everyone's so lucky. I had this big ball I formed on the right hand side of my lip. It was just so hard. She tried to break it down at one point and the pain was horrendous. I've never felt pain like it before in my life. Georgie was left with scar tissue when her lip fillers went wrong. And now she says she'd only ever trust a medic. There's people out there who aren't nurses, who aren't medically trained and they're putting needles into people's faces. Like, so many things can go wrong and people don't realise until it actually gets done to you. You think, oh no, it will never happen to me, but things like that happen all the time. Hi, come on through. Today, this aesthetics clinic in Liverpool is being inspected by Safe Face, a government-approved body who are trying to make the industry safer by creating a voluntary register only medics can join. Even though it's not illegal, it's still immoral and unethical for you to, you know, assume that you've got this knowledge of facial anatomy, the nervous system, arteries, all those sorts of things that really can disfigure somebody and cause them life-threatening um, reactions. The difference between what we do here and where they're being lured to, and it is they're being lured to it, um, is often a matter of 10 or 20 pounds. It's not, you know, it's not double the price to go to someone safe. The Department of Health say they're exploring options to strengthen the regulation of cosmetic procedures and improve the safety through better training, robust qualifications for practitioners and better information so that people can make informed decisions about their care. I just think that there's good and bad in all industries. You know, there's good doctors that do fillers, there's bad doctors, there's bad nurses, good nurses, and the same with beauty therapists. And while Jordan believes there's good and bad on both sides, the advice to anyone considering lip fillers is do your research before picking the person who'll be picking up the needle. Emu Elch, ITV News, Liverpool.